did you get into her shots? You know what? Uh, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. That's what the uh, CDC said. Right which away. is what it should be. Right away or within two weeks? I think it's two weeks. Well, I'm thinking a month. No. You have to show your card? I don't know. I, if I was a business, you know, you got you have to get the the mayor or mandate you should have a mask. But as soon as they, as soon as they relax that, I won't say no, no mask. If you don't want to wear you don't want to do even better. I think most will do that. Some won't, but like that today, I, I didn't have my mask with Jonah. We were at the shell station and ready to drink. They have a mask on. So let's let's not just go and get a drink. He's like, oh, I don't know. Like, they make like sick. I don't think that's sick. Oh, like, son, <laughs> these things don't do a thing. You're safe. I don't know who told you that. But trust me, all right? Yeah, all right, that's what one He had no problem. I was like, that's it. I'm so done with it. I don't want to have that done. I remember. I better be here. First time I took the school. Just going to always have to look at it. And I have to look at the Well, I need to have one because if the judges are going to be here, they'll they feel more comfortable with that. So I better. Yeah, I know the. I can't remember which one it was. I have one shot. They give me so many in the army. Boy, it bubbled up. I was like, oh man, that thing. It was like a nut. I got up in the morning. I was like, I could barely move my arm. <laughs> I got 
Yeah. No. <laughs> no. But anyhow, they just scratch it and give you a shot up there. Give you a, uh, put the stuff on it and you, the iron swell it up. Hmm. I think I saw the Joneses pull up. I know they would want me to. If I could find my my mask that I find to be a little more comfortable. No, the, the blue one. I like that blue one. What, you know, like a Casey who did masks? This is different. Is this supposed to be VJ? Yes, the middle of the top. I don't remember it being split right here. No, I'll tell you, you got it on there. <laughs> yeah. You know what? No, I think that was supposed to be sealed right there. I think it tore. That just makes it. I don't know. We'll see. I know the wolves won't be here. I don't know about Jenny and the kids. Howdy. So I see you didn't fix the email. Well, what is it? Say? What's wrong with it? It didn't say what was in. It was it was in. Bible Jeopardy. Just oh, Bible Jeopardy. Bible Jeopardy topic. Bible Jeopardy. Oh. Huh. No, I, uh, I, got, I forgot to uh, send it out, so I was like rushing when I got home, got back. Hola. There. <clears throat> How many do we Zero got? people because the Jones are here? No, there's somebody on there. There's one. That could be Dorita. <laughs> oh, that, that would not be nice. <laughs> Messing with Chris. Everyone log in before you come to services. Chris will get real excited. He said he could have, he didn't say it. Well, Larry, Larry's doing pretty good over there. Oh, I'm well, good. You getting ready to pull that trailer somewhere? Oh, did you see it pulling in? I saw the trailer. No, I saw the pop-up. Really? Yeah, I saw it. I got a pop-up. High wall pop-up. Uh, I got yeah. it's extra tall. Yeah, when I stand in there, I can just barely get the ceiling. Yeah, for tall people. Is that a new one? Yeah, it's a 2019. Hmm. Those are interesting. They're they making those. Hmm? But they quit making them. This one has a slide out. The dinette area slides out about that far. So when you walk in, it's, it was more spacious than many of the hardwall trailers I was looking at. And uh, it's got all, it's got a microwave, a stove, an oven. All the modern convenience. It's, it's, it's oh, nice. Shower. Roof over Got a shower, got a toilet. I'm glad somebody's moving up. Yeah. <laughs> like the jars. Move out of the pop <laughs> So, where is it plugged into short power currently? No, it's not plugged in at all. Is there are lights on the trailer? Oh, pitch. I forgot. Thank you. Oh, the frame on that. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Hmm. I didn't notice that. Well, it's well, it's well, it's first thing I noticed it. Yeah, it's got lights on the trailer. So, somebody walks into it, runs mm -hmm. into it. Oh, it was on the trailer hitch or something? Well, or on top of the. Oh, the crank. Uh, something like that. It's general area. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Well, uh, it's a drive down down tomorrow. Morning. So tomorrow's shot day? Tomorrow's shot day. What time? Yeah. That's not a bad time to go. Next something out probably. What are you going? One on one? I would question those fifty one. I would go with my plan is to take fifty one, but that depends on traffic in the morning. Which one are you getting? I believe I believe 
be despised? No, I don't think so. But it is two, it is two shots, so it's even Moderna and our yeah. Pfizer. So yeah. it's not a single shot. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. A lot of folks are complaining about the J&J &J because they don't think they're getting the money's worth since it's only a single shot. <laughs> and it'll only keep them from dying. I mean, if yeah. right. it's only got percentages are lower from the other two, but it still keeps us from going to the hospital. Keeps us from dying. Right. The, the, part, of the, part of the problem is the way vaccination is different. So it's not really comparable to the 95, 96 of the other two. Because they measure it differently. Right. Right. Because we have money better. 95 is better than 60. Yeah, but I'm not sure. You know, so much ago, to get out of the state, you would have been like a drug store. Did you do yeah, you know what the, the guy I bought from? He even told me to show me to make sure you don't get to hit this switch to turn off that light. Turn off. Yeah. First thing I did for God. Well, and but I noticed we drove up and when the lights aren't on outside yet. Yes, that's the only thing. So the trailer is on the trailer itself. I'm sorry. The battery on the trailer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's hitch lift, but you got to turn on this other one which lights it up to so use the hitch. Yeah. And then I, I forgot to turn it off. Very fancy. I know. Maybe you need to spend some of those solar batteries. It is. It does solar. Not much. Very little. 15. Thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For everything that they can do, it's pretty much. Just think of his appliances. They're probably more it is a nice company. Or is it your first trailer? I've never owned a trailer. Oh, oh, yes, I did. $1,100. $1, $1, $1, $1. $1, $1. $1, $1. There you go. See? That, that, that includes the trust. But it did, you know, but it didn't have a lot of other stuff on it. How, how much did your house trailer cost when you were in service? Uh, you can't compare it to something that long ago. It was. It was a 25 foot house trailer with, with, a, canvas, was, with a canvas roof. Ours was a, um, went on the back of the pickup truck. Oh, yeah. we had, no, the truck camper. We had one of those for many years. Well, we didn't have it too long because we ended up going to the field. <laughs> Well, our first house only cost $5,400, $54,000. You can't get much house now for that. You can't get a RV. Yeah. RV. The first house I bought was 94000 over there at Deer Valley. I sold it for one hundred and ten. I looked it up the other day. It's at two hundred fifty. It is a... Shared drive of starter home. You got a, a backyard. No, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I have backyards. Yeah, yeah, it's just like a school. Yeah. You yeah, get there stretching. That's about it. Yeah, it's probably still growing. Up. That's ridiculous. That's right. I had a note. Oh, I was bringing up for it. Her son in law just took a job up in Washington State, uh, Washington State, Spokane Valley. Mm -hmm. It is so bad up there that you can look on, on uh, Realtor.com and houses. It shows up today, tomorrow it will have a sale pending sign on it. It doesn't matter what the price is. That's, it will have a sale pending sign on it within 48 hours at the longest. That's RVs and trailers right now. I don't know how many times I was on my way to go look at one. I got a text or call and I just sold it. And I got to go to look at that one. There was six other people looking at it. Well, he's living in his dad's. He's dead. He took his dad's fifth wheel up there. That's what he's living in. <laughs> well, we beat last week. That's pretty good. Oh. There's my kids. Yes. Well, better get the uh, pew packers ready. Right in here. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick that up at the end there. Yeah, I gotta go get it first. I didn't have to set out.
Larry, opening prayer. Have an opening prayer? Would you like to open? Oh, wait, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Usually it's the elders, but you're the elder list. Elder Urus. No, elder. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, I had this all in my mouth. You know? Oh, right. He doesn't show an uh, opening prayer. No, it's the elders always do the opening prayer. Oh, a word from the elders. That's when the prayer comes. Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll speak on their behalf, and Larry will pray on their behalf. All right, we're uh, going to try something a little different uh, tonight. I want to try to lead from the PowerPoint and see how well I can swipe it in time. <clears throat> Do not judge. Too late. And so I don't know if you can see that very well online, uh, Doretta, and there's one other. So let me know afterwards. Send me a text if, uh, if that work, this works out okay for you. Let me I tried zooming it in a little bit more than normal, too. So. <clears throat> so years I spent in vanity and pride, number 332. 332, years I spent in vanity and pride. Howdy. Larry, you might get off the hook. Hey, Reagan. Good. Reagan, you want to do the closing song or closing prayer? Give me closing song. Closing song. Oh, there's Cole. <laughs> hey, Cole, you want to do closing prayer? Sure. Who had closing prayer? Oh, Jim, you're off the hook. Sorry, Larry. <laughs> All right, years I spent in many team and private. I got it up here on on the uh, screen. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was both applied to me. Ne'er my boon and soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I spurned. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was most applied to me. There my good and soul found liberty at Calvary. Now given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was most applied to me. There my burdened soul found living. 
liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that true salvation plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so that liberty at Calvary. That go okay? All right. I found it after I swipe, I can't get my hand back into the rhythm rhythm until the next you know group. Use your other hand. Well, I did that too, but it's like the patting your belly and rubbing your head. Once I did that, my other hand was like trying to do it with it and I messed myself up. It's gonna take some getting used to. Is it just a tap hmm? or a swipe? Is it a tap or a swipe? You know what? I could do a tap probably. I was swiping out of habit. Oh, you know what? I have to end the slideshow to get to the other slide. Oh, because you didn't put them in one slideshow. 823 Mansion Over the Hilltop. That's not what I wanted. Oh. <laughs> okay, that looks better. I know I could, but I did this at like the last second. You're just full of last second stuff today. Well, because I've been doing a lot of stuff today. Very productive. <laughs> Mansion over the hilltop, 823. Mansion over the hilltop. <clears throat> I'm satisfied with just a cottage below. A little silver and a little gold. But in that city where ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver line. I got a mansion just over the hill bar in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander. But walk the streets that are pure as gold. So often tempted, so invented and tested, and like the prophet, my pillow was stolen. And though I find here no permanent dwelling, I know he'll give me a match of my own. I got a match just over the hilltop. In the bright land where we'll never grow old, and someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound. I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a robe and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Then I got a Close it out. It would be better if I copied and pasted. I did that before. It's my problem. How do I know when I'm at the last? How do you know you're at the last verse? I can see the next screen oh. coming on my side. Um, 417. Walking in sunlight, 417. Come on, tablet. All right. <clears throat> See, uh, after this song, we'll have Pew Packers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee, promised to buy that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light, in him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to his side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine, hallelujah, I am rejoicing, Singing his praises, Jesus is mine. All right, Hugh Packers, you're next. Let's see if I can pull that up. Man, look at that, don't look. <laughs> what is this thing doing? Did you see those? No. Okay, it was showing the answers. I'm gonna stand off to the side. Can you guys still see if I'm standing right here? All right. I said, ask if you guys could still see. Okay, Pew Packers, who has a memory verse? Josh, we'll start with you take so I can hear you. Simon said, Simon answers, You are the Christ, the God, son. the Son of the living God. Very good. Do you remember where that's found? Matthew 16, 16. Good job. Jody? I am the life of bread. I am the what? Life of bread. And the bread of life. Almost. I was just, you had just all the right words, just two were backwards. So I am the bread of life. Good job. Would you remember where that's found? No? Oh, we'll work on that. Don't worry. You're doing good. Proverbs 2.6. How's that start? For the Lord. Lord gives wisdom. Come from his mouth, calling um, wisdom and understanding. And that's right, wisdom and understanding. I think I remember that first. Very good. We'll keep working on that one, though. That's that's good. That's a good one to know, right? Cool. Uh, Acts twenty two sixteen. And now, why do you delay? Rise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Okay. Who's talking in that verse? Uh, it's uh, well, it's Paul to the um. Uh, Ananias is talking it's to Ananias Paul. To, yeah. yeah. Acts twenty two. Good. 
Proverbs chapter 8, verse 36. He who sins against me hurts himself. He who love, hates me loves death. Okay, all right, good, good one. I like that one. All right, Bible Jeopardy. We have our third topics. Can you see Josh? Am I your way? 2 Samuel 3, 2 Samuel 4, Matthew 15, Matthew 16, Joshua, and the New Testament. Might be a little difficult for you guys, okay? So I want you guys to try to do ones and twos, all right? But you can try for the harder ones if you think you can do it. But we're going to start with Mr. Reagan. Uh, yeah, remember your own score. Remember your own score. I'll do Matthew 15, 4, 3. Matthew 15, 4, 3. Jesus said the scribes and Pharisees had invalidated this commandment for the sake of their tradition. You shall not lie. You shall not steal. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy or honor your father and your mother. From Matthew 15. Uh, B. I say B, you shall not steal. Yeah. Honor, honor your father and your mother. Oh, am I blocking the camera camera? I'll just go over here. No, not the camera camera, just the camera. Yeah. Why am I blocking? Yeah, I think that'll be fine. All right, cool. Uh, let's do Second Samuel chapter three for uh, let's do two for two. Abner told the elders of Israel they should do this to David: stone him, make him, or make a treaty with him, make him their king, or ambush him. Uh, make him their king. Good job. Two points. Jonah. This is gonna be hard, okay? Josh for one. Joshua for one. Joshua. All right. How many stones were set up as a memorial to the Lord for bringing the children of Israel across the Jordan on dry ground? Seven, ten, or one. Do you remember how many sons Jacob had? It's the same amount of uh, sons he had that there were apostles. 10, 12. What's your, which one? 12. You're going to go with 12? Good job, Jonah. It was 12. One point. Jody. Um, let's go with one of the number ones, okay? One green. Sorry, the green one? Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll go with the New Testament one for green. In Revelation... Where did the demons gather the kings for battle with God? Apollyon, Jerusalem, Gethsemane, or Armageddon? Jerusalem. Hmm? Jerusalem? Jerusalem? No, not Jerusalem. It's going to be one of the other ones. It's going to, that's a hard one for you. I don't think we've ever read Revelation. Um, Joshua, maybe mom can give you a hint. Ask your mom for a hint. She's saying she's shaking her head, don't. <laughs> Maybe Jim can give you a hint. Look at Mr. Jim. Number four. You think number four? Armageddon. Okay, so in Revelation, the demon together the kings for battle with God at Armageddon. Armageddon. Joshua. Come on. Joshua for three. Joshua for three. All right. In the days of Joshua, the five kings had the misfortune to encounter what? A whirlwind sent by God, large stones from heaven, a hailstorm of the host, or a slime. Hmm. 
Can you give me an answer? Three. Number three, hailstone of the host. That's close. There were large stones thrown down from heaven. Oh, oh man. So you're going that top, first thought. The top didn't really make sense. All right. Ready? Uh, do second Samuel 4 for three. Second Samuel 4 for three points. What did David have done to the men who killed Ishbosheth? They were given the house of Ishbosheth. They were made princes. They were slain. They were made captains of David. Uh, the, they're given house. Uh, wait, no, they're, they're made captains of David. No, they were slain. They were slain. It's been a while since we looked at Second Samuel 4. Cole. Matthew chapter 16 for 3. From that time, Jesus began talking about his death, the streets of gold, how to destroy the Pharisees or the past. A is death. Very good. Three points. Jonah. Joshua two. Joshua for two points. Who was stoned in the valley of Anchor? Zira, Aiken, Carmi, or Dothan? Huh? Aiken? It was Aiken. Good job, Jonah. Two points. All right, Jody, we're going to give you. What is it? You want to try Matthew 15 for one, Jody? Isaiah prophesied, saying, "The people honor me with their lips, but their but this is far from me." Was it their actions, their minds, their thoughts, or their heart? Their heart. Very good. Their heart for one. Good job, Jody. Joshua. New Testament for two. Why were the other disciples angry with James and John? Was it because they caught more fish? They forgot to buy food? They had special privileges? Or they asked Jesus a favor? They asked Jesus for a favor. That is correct, Josh. Two points. Mr. Reagan. All right, let's do New Testament for three. New Testament for three. Who was Paul's companion on his first missionary journey? Timothy, Barnabas, Luke, or Silas? Barnabas. Very good. Three points. Cool. Um, let's do Matthew 16 for four. Four points. What did Jesus say when Peter began to rebuke him? I am your Lord and Master. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Get behind me, Satan, or you must obey the signs. Get behind me, Satan. Four points. All right, Jonah. Only ones or twos, okay? Okay. Big one, please. You mean big for you? Matthew for two. All right. You want to do the, the green Matthew for two? No. The beige? Yeah. What will happen if the blind lead the blind? They both fall in a ditch. They will both find their way. They will both be healed. Or one shall fall, the other uh, will lift him up. A. A, they both will fall in a ditch. That's right. Are you saying No. <laughs> Good job, Jonah. You you remember how many points you got? Yeah. How many? Yes. Five. Five points. You got five points. I know. It's like, is the spirit croaking in here? <laughs> All right, Jody. I want to give you one, okay? All right, you want to pick one? Pick one of the number ones. Green. Orange or red? Quickly. 
Fred. All right. One. Second Samuel three for one. There was war between the house of David and the house of Achish, Asael, Joab, or Saul. Saul. Is somebody whispering? That's right, Jody. That is Saul. That's very good. <laughs> you're doing, you guys are doing great. I should not. Thank you. That's very good. Joshua, your turn. <clears throat> good. Stay quickly, please. This test is meant for four points. Are you sure? Four, all right, that's going to be a hard one. At whose house did Peter stay while he was in Joppa? Simon's, Matthew's, Aeneas, Aeneas, or Cornelius? It's from Acts 10. Matthews. Matthews, no, Josh. It was that Simon's. Well, not Matthew Jobs. It's Joppa. I'm, my mind's in the wrong spot. Yeah, it's Simon's. I was thinking of something different. But yeah, Simon. It was not Matthew. Brain was not All right, Reagan. Who does that five? New Testament for five points. Let's get up there. All right. Who searched hard for Paul when he was in chains in Rome? Uh, one of us. Onisphorus, Onisphorus, Phygelus, or Claudius? Onisimus. Very good. What? Nope. What? Oh, it's, am it's, I wrong it's or am I right? Huh? I don't know who Onisphorus is. I've never heard <laughs> no, of that. No, I think it is Onisphorus. I, I was thinking Onisimus too, but look up uh, 2 Timothy 1, 16 and 17. Because Onisphorus searched hard for him too, right? Or no, he just found him. Yes, what you're going to find somebody if you're searching. Huh? Oh, right. Somebody look up Philemon and tell me if Onesimus, if it's told that he searched hard for Paul. You think I'd remember? I put it in there. It is. That's the name I did. Onesiphorus, uh, Onesiphorus, who I've never heard of before, but it's right there. Oh, that's why it's on five. I'm pretty sure it never says Onesimus was searching hard for Paul. It never says, it just that Paul had him in it with him. I'm going to give you partial credit on that. We'll give so, you two points. Two points. Yeah, we'll give you two points. Second Samuel chapter three for three. Joab said, Abner had come to do this, make himself king, prophesy, deceive David, or fulfill the will of God. Uh, B. Prophesy? Yeah. Deceive yeah. David. He came to deceive David. All right, Jonah. You're uh, Adding a thousand here. Go for it. Do second the orange one for one and two or the green one for one and two? Or Matthew for two. Good job. Matthew 16 for two. When Jesus asked, Whom do you say that I am? What did Peter answer? Jeremiah, Elisha, John the Baptist, or the Christ? A. A, Jeremiah. Think about uh, Josh's uh, uh, memory verse. He gave the answer in his memory verse. Matthew 16, 16, right, Josh? Matthew? No. It's either Jeremiah, Elisha, John the Baptist, or the Christ. Uh, I know it. Mm -hmm. Christ? Yes. 
or it's the Christ. It's the Christ. There you go. You're not going to get points for that one, but you got to it eventually. All right, so remember that. When Jesus asked, whom do you say that I am? What did Peter answer? The Christ. All right, Jojo. Found for two. All right. What did David say he had done to the man that brought the news of Saul's death? That he slew him, gave him a bounty, beat him, or honored him? Beat him. Beat him? He slew him. That means he killed him. All right. That's all right. That was a good try. All right, Joshua. Joshua for four points. How many cities were given to the Levites? 40, 42, 48, or 77? You know this. You didn't answer. 40 points. You're saying which one? 40. 40. Anybody know? 48. How did you know that? You're guessing? No. Oh, 48. Yeah. For you, did you read that recently? Yes. It's 48 cities given to the Levites, not 40. But that's a hard one. I don't think, Josh, I could have answered that one. That's a hard one. All right, last round. Uh, Joshua for five. Joshua for five. After Joshua and before the kings, who did God send as helpers to Israel? After Joshua, before the kings, who did God send as helpers to Israel? If you think about it, you can. you should be able to get that. Moses. And, uh, Think uh, about Egypt. the books of the Bible. So that's before Joshua. After Joshua, before the kings, who did God send as helpers to Israel? Leviticus. Hmm? The judges. The book of Judges. Joshua Judges. Uh -huh. Go. Cool. Uh, Matthew chapter 16 for 5. Jesus asked, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits this? Uh, forfeits his life. Oh, I mean, I'll give you partial on that one. His soul, his soul, I'll give you a point because that's, that's different. All right, Jonah, last one. Which one do you want? You want 2 Samuel 4 for 1 or Matthew 16 for 1? Pick one. Time. Matthew for 1. All right. What Old Testament prophet did Jesus refer to as the only sign the Sadducees and Pharisees would receive? Was it the sign of Jonah, the sign of Ezekiel, the sign of Isaiah, or the sign of Moses? Moses. You sure, Jonah? You want to try again? Come on, Jonah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a good hand there, Jim. It was the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the grave. Three days, three nights. Okay? Remember that. All right, Joe, you're going to get 2 Samuel 4 for 1, okay? It's the last one up there for you. Yeah. This man had a son that was lame. Was it Jonathan, David, Saul, or ish bos -heth? A, B, C, or D. You can ask Joshua for help because he's not going to. Well, I'll let him know. Never mind. 
Hey, Jody, bring out time. A. You say Jonathan, Reagan, what do you think? C. C. Saw. Yeah. Joel? C. C. Saw. Jonathan. Yes. Jonathan had a son that was lame. Huh? Oh. But Saul, I mean, there are times where, you know, people will be called the son of David who are like his great, great grandkid. So partial on Saul, but it was Jonathan he was looking for. Okay, Josh, last one, and then we're going to close it up. Matthew 15.4. Double Jeopardy, Josh. That's new. Uh, I, if you take double Jeopardy, it's a really, really, really hard question, but you can offer up all your points, and if you get it right, it doubles all your points. You want to take that or just go with the regular question? Wait, regular. Regular? Why is it not working? You don't have a cancel button. It worked before when I tested it. Ah, no. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Josh, we'll do the second thing of chapter four one. That, that was a fail. Mephibosheth. Fail when he was this age, when he was really dropped when he was this age. How old was he when he was dropped? Was he one years old, three years old, five years old, or six years old? You've seen this question before about three weeks ago. Three. You're going to say three years old? Mm. He was five. It's close. Five years old. These are hard questions. They were difficult. The double jeopardy question would have been really hard, but it was more difficult to get to it. All right, how do we end out pew packers? A little fast. Let's try again. And here, believe, repent, confess, be baptized, live the faithful Christian life. Getting, getting really good at that. Good job. Keep it up. Let's try it next time. All right. Reagan, will you? Uh, Oh Lord, Father in heaven, thank you for allowing us to come here again tonight, God, to worship you. Please continue to watch over us through these trying times in our country, Father. And please continue to bless these services here tonight, God. In your prayer, pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You did a good job. Good answers. Good effort. Good job. All right. So the seniors meeting on March 17th is scheduled. Uh, see Bill Gilkison's for details on that. Uh, we want to keep Carol and Glee Cooley, continue to keep them in our prayers. Like it says here in the bulletin, Glee is recovering from an infection. I'm going to see a doctor soon about the back, a pain in her back. We got any update on that? No, probably cold. Okay. Um, and Carol is due to have hips replacement surgery on March 24th. But maybe before he was trying to get Okay, so we'll be getting an update on that one too, probably. And of course, we're thankful that Nancy Totten's uh, biopsy came back uh, negative. Thank you for that. And uh, be thankful to the Lord and more prayers on that. Keep Ben Wooders in your prayers. Uh, if you can, give him a call. Uh, he hasn't had a chance to talk to too many folks. and. That would be good for, for Ben, I think. Give him a call. Uh, anything else that needs to be announced or mentioned? Larry is uh, going to give us a, a prayer for that. Let's pray. Holy Father in heaven, we're so thankful for all the many blessings that you've given us. We pray that you'll continue to watch over us and care for us uh, in the coming days. Father, we're thankful that we could uh, be here this evening to study your word and to uh, 
see the uh, younger folks that participate in the pew packers questions. We are thankful, Father, that uh, you've uh, taken care of us through this pandemic, and we just pray that you'll continue to watch over us as things materialize here in the coming days. We ask you to bless those who have been uh, really affected by the COVID, uh, Gary Wolf and his family in particular, and others. We just pray, Father, that you'll bless us through uh, these trying times. Father, we're thankful for everything that you do for us. We know that we're so fortunate to be blessed by you, and we uh, thank you for that. Father, we pray that you will continue with us now through this evening. We pray that you'll be with uh, Chris as he brings us this lesson from Genesis this evening. You, we pray that you'll continue with us throughout this week especially be with those uh, who we've just mentioned, be with uh, Ben Wooters. Uh, Father, we pray that he will continue to, to improve. We pray that you'll be with uh, Glee and uh, Carol Cooley and help them, Father, through their difficult times, and particularly with uh, the upcoming surgery for Carol. And we just pray that they'll both uh, do well. Be with others of our number, Father, who have uh, had difficult times and are continuing to do that. Uh, be with our shut-ins uh, who have... Uh, probably experienced uh, particularly difficult times uh, since uh, they haven't been able to see other people during this uh, pandemic. And we just pray you'll bless them. Continue now, Father, with us through this week and uh, help us to always do your will day by day. We pray that uh, we will all be back on Sunday and uh, many more will be here, Father, to, to worship you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 6 again. Last week we were looking at Genesis chapter 5 and the first part of 6. Well, we kind of skimmed over the first part of 6. We didn't have uh, pew packers, and so I, I didn't want to uh, do a short lesson, but although pew packers went a little long, but hopefully we'll get through what I want to this uh, evening. I want to guess to go back to uh, chapter 6, verses 1 uh, through 8. I kind of skimmed over it, but I want to look at this a little closer and try to, to, to dig into some of these things that we, we did overlook last time. I won't go into all the, the details that we, we did before. This can be a section that may be or could be confusing for some folks. And but I, I think the more I look at this, the more I study this, the more I feel confident in uh, some of the, uh, my assertions and understandings that I, I have in this passage. I think it can be clear. Let's start by looking at verses at verse one and two of chapter six. Now, it came about when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they choose. Now, we've been reading in chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, a lot about Adam and Eve and Cain, Abel, Seth, and focusing on Cain and Seth and their genealogies and their, and their descendants. And I believe, and I teach, that the sons of God are the descendants of Seth, and that the daughters of men are the sons of Cain. Cain was not only kicked out of the Garden of Eden, but he, uh, after killing his brother Abel, moved further east, became the wanderer away from Adam and his family there to be on his own. But as they, they had Seth, and Seth and his numbers and all the others began to grow in numbers here, Cain and his families were growing over here, and they were multiplying and getting to a point where the, those over here who called on the name of the Lord, the text tells us when we're looking at the descendants of Seth, these were the ones that were more godly and righteous. Cain clearly wasn't. When we were looking at his descendants, they were very boastful and arrogant. Remember Lamech? You know, Cain will be avenged 70 times, but I, Lamech, will be avenged 70 times 7 if I kill somebody. It's my paraphrase on that. And the, the goal of those two passages, I think, is to show us the direction the descendants were going in. One was godly and righteous, the other was not. But as they began to get older, the generations of Seth began to look at the daughters of Cain 
and just saying, you know what, that's a wife I want. But notice what they were looking for. When we look at the text, what were the, the sons of God looking for? Beauty. Beauty. And that's the, uh, the Hebrew word uh, can also mean desirable to the eyes. So they were going along saying, no, no, no. Ah, she looks pretty nice. I'll take her. What should they be looking for? Cole, what kind of wife are you looking for? He's like, oh, no, don't take on me. <laughs> what are you going to look for in a wife? Beauty. Hmm? A good heart. You know, someone more, someone who may be righteous and in line with the word of God. I think so. And that, that's what they weren't doing. And then another key was not only were they looking for, you know, that which was desirable to the eye. Another key phrase is whomever they choose. Now, remember this. The sons of God saw the daughters of men. They were beautiful and they took wives for themselves. Whomever they choose. Who was the standard? They were. Where else do we read about that? That they did what they thought was right. That's right. The whole theme of Judges is found in two verses. In those days, there was no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And how did that go? Bad. Poorly. That's what these guys were doing. Those who were coming from Seth's line... The sons of God began to just drift away from God, doing things that they wanted to do. And they weren't looking. In, and when we read here in a little bit, we're going to it kind of gives you with this impression that the Canaanites were pretty evil, bad guy. Oh, they're so evil. Yes. But sometimes we just think that they were like murderous, robbers type types of folks. But as you, you'll see that when we get when we begin to look at these words and how it's describing them, not necessarily. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when we when we get down there to this uh, verse, verses three. The Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever because he is because also he is flesh. Nevertheless, his day shall be one hundred and twenty years. Spirit here is capitalized. The translators of the New American Standard thinks that this is the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. In, in my studies of the Holy Spirit, whenever it comes up, it's generally in use of the power of God going out in some miraculous way, either from God or he's giving miraculous power or insight to his people. And I don't think that's what's being said here. I don't think it should be capitalized. I don't think God's saying, oh, the, the miraculous power of the third person of the God has not going to stay with the people. I think he's talking about their attitude. They're no longer seeking righteousness. They're no longer seeking to, to be spiritual, the spiritual things. They're seeking what? The flesh, the desires of the eyes. And they're no longer as concerned about godly things like their forefathers were. God's looking down and he's seeing this. And he recognizes it's not going to be too long before they've drifted away. In fact, I'm going to give them 120 years. And in 120 years, we know what's going to happen. It's going to be the flood. So he's already put it down. That's what's going to happen. They're moving away. Now, verse 4 is where uh, it, it can get difficult. Uh, mainly it's because I think King James Version, New King James Version, the NIV, and the New Literal Translations have translated the word Nephilim as giant or giants. I'm more and more convinced every time I look and study at this, it is not giants and should not be considered as giants. And I have, have some pretty, I think, good reasoning for that. Uh, we know from uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, when the spies were over there in Canaan, they come back with a 10 report. That we were just grasshoppers in their eyes. They were the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, or the, the Nephilim. And so we li were left with this impression, oh, we were like grasshoppers. They must have been giants. And I used to teach that. I don't think so anymore. And here, here's why. The word Nephilim is only found three times in the Bible. Here and over in Numbers 13.33, the, the, the ten spies. But just like with the Greek words, Hebrew words have root words. 
The root word for Nephilim is Nephal. And that word is found 453 times in our Old Testament. When you look it up, it means fall or falling. Doesn't, not necessarily someone who fell from grace, not like that, but fall or falling, like I'm going to fall upon you. What, is, what, do you, what does that bring to mind? If I say I'm going to lie in wait and then I'm going to fall upon this guy, what does that mean? Yeah. I'm going to try, I'm going to attack him. And that's how that word is mostly used all throughout the Old Testament. Now, obviously, this isn't the word fall; it's Nephilim. But I think as we continue to look at the passage and look at the words used to describe these folks, it will help us to see what is a Nephilim. It's a noun in the Hebrew. So the text says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Now, it does not mean that Nephilim were the offspring of this union of the sons of uh, God and the daughters of men. It is simply saying that the Nephilim were there before this uh, uh, occurred, when the, the two groups came together, and they were around afterward. And then it gives an explanation about what kind of people are, are coming up as a result of the influence, I think, of the Canaanites, the influence of the Nephilim. They were mighty men and old men of renown. What are What is that? I think when we look at that, it will help us with the Nephilim. Mighty men and men around. The Hebrew word for mighty is translated variously as warrior, mighty, or valor. The Hebrew word for renown is mostly translated as name. Someone's name or they, they have a, they've made a name for themselves. How do you make a name for yourself? By doing something. Okay. Name name somebody in our current generation who's made a name for himself that everyone knows. Trump. Donald Trump. Okay. So I don't want to get to him because I don't want to get into politics. Give me another one. <laughs> How about Elon Musk? You know who that guy is? Has he made a name for himself? What has he done that make him a name for himself? Money. Oh, yeah, the most rich, richest man in the world, although I think Tesla stock dropped pretty significantly recently. I don't know if he still is. Hmm? Went back it went back up. So he's rich again. Well, it still is. No matter what, he's at billions. He also uh, is sending, uh, he's like the most, po uh, uh, not most popular, successful privatization of the space industry. He's got the Starship that can take off, hover, and land, a three-story Starship. Uh, he's gonna, he wants to send people to Mars. This guy is a pioneer almost. He's sending a car to Mars. He's sending a car to Martin. Who does that? <laughs> He's going to be remembered and probably in a very good way, right? Has he, would you say he has advanced civilization? I'd say yes. You think he has done a lot of good for humanity? I think I would say yes. Is he a godly man? No. I, I've read up a lot about this guy. Not a godly man. But he's a man of renown. He's a man who's made a name for himself. And when you think through all the people you've learned about in school, all the people you always hear about, how many of them were godly people? Very, very few. Typically, those who are godly aren't remembered much throughout history. Now, we may know them. We know who Alexander Campbell is. We, we know why George Washington would be considered godly. Most people probably wouldn't be able to tell you that. I had to search pretty deep to find out that he was baptized into Christ for salvation. I never knew that until it was brought to my attention and I researched it out and that was true. It was a true story. That was a godly man. That was a man who pushed hard to get people to be spiritual. But how many are out there that were like that? Very few. Nephilim in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, but I feel pretty confident in it, are, are those are going to be connected to men of renown, people who made a name for themselves, like the, the Nafal, those who fall upon and prey upon people, I would call them tyrants. Uh, a great example of this, Jenny mentioned this to me, we like Vikings. Vikings would go along and they would fall upon people and they would, they'd 
created a lot of problems. But you know, we, they made a name for themselves. They have TV shows. How many kids? I remember as a kid, I'm going to be a Viking. Who wants to be a Viking? <laughs> when you really find out who they are. But they made a name for themselves. And just like Lamech, uh, the, uh, the descendants of Cain, he made a name for himself. And what did, remember when we were studying through that and we would look at his children, what, what did Moses write for all his kids? The things they were known for. This one was the lyre and the, the harp. This one was all, uh, uh, all the instruments or the bronze and, and the steel, not steel, but bronze work and whatnot, and all those different uh, uh, things that he did. And then the tent maker, the one that did livestock. He was emphasizing the things that they did that progressed humanity and civilization, but they weren't godly people. I wonder if the Sethites over here, godly people, were sitting and like, look at all the things these guys are doing. I want to marry into this family. She's pretty. I want to marry over to this. And it was all about whom they chose, what was best for them. And they weren't thinking ahead to the repercussions. The most wisest person in the world ever to ever live was who? Reagan? In the Bible. Wisest man in the Bible. Okay. Very good. Yes. Another one. The second. No. Solomon. Solomon. What happened to Solomon? Why did he fall from grace? Yeah, foreign wives who were not godly wise. How could those women pull away the wisest person in the world? It can happen. The point I think that God wants us to see here, choose your spouse wisely. What kind of spouse should you be looking for? A godly one. I've, I've, I've seen in my short time, I'm only 45, but even when I was in Durango, and Jenny can attest to this, I had people coming to me and say, Chris, would you do our wedding? Oh, you're getting, who are you getting married to? Well, this guy who's not a member of the church, but he's having Bible studies, Chris, and he's going to, he's going to come around. Oh. Well, that was back in 2009, 2010. Yeah, not, she doesn't even go to church anymore. And I know many like that. Now, I've heard the, the stories where they did bring their husband or their wife over. I've heard those. But I hear a lot more on the other side. Choose your spouse wisely. That's a very important. Look what happened at the, to the world back in the time of Adam and Seth and Cain and their descendants. And when God saw it, what did he decide he was going to do? My spirit, their attitudes are not going to be striving toward me anymore. The world's going to come to me. He recognized, or not recognized, he knew that there weren't going to be anyone after Noah. There wasn't going to be anyone left to strive after me anymore. There's too much bad influence. Their thoughts were evil continually. Just because it says evil, evil isn't just murder and robbery and all of that. It can be anything else. You look at our society, we do a lot of amazing, great things. But where is our country headed? In a bad, bad direction. It's ungodly. But we still do great things. We have a lot of men of, and women of renown, mighty we have a lot of heroes. Who are our heroes nowadays? Football players, basketball players. Not, not real heroes. Not, not the way it should be. I don't, I don't think it was that different back then. And so when God saw there wasn't going to be anyone left, what did he do? What did he say he was going to do? We didn't read it, but he says, uh, he tells Noah, I'm going to destroy all men, all animals, the birds of the air, and the earth. How does he destroy all things with the breath of life and the earth? How did he do that? Water. Water, the flood. <clears throat> and when the waters, the, everything uh, went away, and Noah and his family were saved by the ark, Noah comes out. What was the first thing he did? He built an altar sacrifice to God. And what did God put up in the sky? A rainbow as what? What kind of promise was it for? He'll never 
destroy the earth by a flood again. And, but never forget why he destroyed the earth by a flood and all mankind. It was the earth wasn't going to produce what God wanted anymore. And a, a day is going to come. And this is what I believe. I believe that God will destroy the earth by fire when the earth no longer produces what God is looking for. Christians. And only God can know. God will be the only person who knows and the last person is baptized in Christ, raised up in that new life. And he's going to, I don't know, maybe say, oh, I'm going to wait this many years and that's it. Because he'll know how, when, how many are coming. I think as long as the earth is producing Christians, he'll let it keep going. But when it stops, he's not going to use a flood. What is he going to use? Fire. You want to ensure that People continue to have opportunity to hear the truth. Marry godly women. Jody and Julie, marry godly men. Boys, choose a Christian spouse. It's important. We can see what happens when we don't. It's here for our example. And I believe that's what the passage is meant to tell us. And it fits in my mind with the context and where the book of Genesis is moving toward. Well, I did not get through all of chapter six. Maybe next time, but that's a good passage. and I want us to understand it. I think it's, especially nowadays, it's very vital for our, our young ones to, to see this and know this. And very, very important. We're going to close things out with a song. And then we'll have the, the closing prayer. We're going to do 798 Sweet By and By. <clears throat> There's a land that is fairer than day, and a land when you stand afar, for the Father waits over the to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall raise on that beautiful shore by and by in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above, we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by. We shall read on that beautiful shore by and by. In the sweet by and by, we shall be on that beautiful shore. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for another time that we can come here and remove ourselves from this perverse world, that we can sing praises to you and fellowship with others, and that we can take Chris's lesson to our mind and hearts as Christians and take him out to the world and spread them to others, Lord. We also pray that we can help others and that you will Watch over those on the prayer list and be with them and keep your helping hand upon them. We also pray for this nation. We pray that you will be with the leaders and help them to realize that this nation was built on your world and that they will look to you for guidance, Lord. We also pray that we can uh, leave this building as Christians and spread the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Gail, I turned it 15. Since we're having to do it.
six, three, two, two, two. Dale, 15. <laughs> You're at 16.
So it looks like that there's no one else on there, just you, just you watching? Yeah. Okay, so good. Good. Okay, I got to edit that out. Chris, what's the password for Wi-Fi? 